How's it going everyone? Welcome back to Artie's Artifacts. Today I'm going to be painting Artorius the Abyss Walker, who is a super depressing character from Dark Souls. He also happens to be the first thing I ever 3D printed, but never painted. The legend of Artorius is one that I resonate with, so I wanted a statue in my office that I also had a hand in making. The print turned out great, and the sword even has some flex to it. Artorius is mostly covered in corroded armor and a royal blue cape, which I plan to modify slightly. I decided to start off by attaching some handles to all the parts to make the priming process a lot easier. There's a lot of intricate detail in the armor. The smaller pieces like the pauldron are going to be primed using a wire as a handle. I am too smart! SMRT! Speaking of primer, I'm going to be using black for most of the model, and gloss black for the shiny remnants of the corroded armor. An airbrush makes this step a lot faster and a lot cleaner. I made sure to light up a bonfire before laying on the primer, just in case I mess up. I got some overspray on my hands and realized I need to invest in some latex gloves for these types of projects. Really spectacular, spared no expense. I took my time and I was careful to get even coverage on the model, searching for all those cracks, creases, and crevasses. The airbrush I'm using is an Iwata HPCS. It's pretty much my go-to for anything statue related. I can't really recommend it enough. For finer details, I also have an HP BS, but I'm not sure I'm going to need it for this project. Artorius wields a great sword, which I primed in gloss black, since I want it to have a little bit of luster still left on it. I put on a layer of gloss black to all the armor before I started with the metallics. Artorius is said to have been corrupted by the abyss. This has left his armor putrefied, oozing an aura of darkness. In order to capture this look in the armor, I'm going to be using a base coat of silver followed up by blue metallics and then rusted metallics. When I'm done, the armor will have various metallic tones and hues, which is what I remember from the game. I spent a good amount of time shading the armor with cool and warm colors. I really wanted the armor to seem like it was singed by the abyss. I took a break from the armor and decided on what shades of blue I would use to make up the cape and cowl. I used three different blues and thin layers and a blue wash to get the first coat on. With the blue cloth color figured out and the first pass of metal shading, Artorius was finally starting to come together. Next I would be able to start the second pass to all of the painting. I started painting all the areas that no one's ever going to see and began highlighting the cowl with lighter blue tones. I busted out some chrome metallics from Vallejo to dry brush onto the sword. Then I repeated the various metallic color shifting shades to add the corrupted look to it. So at this point, I decided to glue some parts together. I figured I would work on a top half and a bottom half. So I glued on Artorius' disabled hand first, using Gorilla Super Glue. But before I could do that, I needed to glue on the big pauldron that goes onto the shoulder. That hand is looking nice and gimpy now. I did a temporary fit of the sword hand to see how everything was jiving, and I was actually happy with how things were coming along. It was nearly impossible to find a good reference for the decal that goes on the back of the cape, so I decided to make it up. Since it was going to be corroded anyway, I figured, why not? These decals were done with a steady hand and a lot of patience. That and a fuckload of time. Once I was satisfied with the cape decal, I started laying out my base onto a thin piece of foam, which I planned on attaching to a wooden base I salvaged from another project I never got to finish. I cut out the template and started sculpting directly onto the foam with various tools. This was to give the base tiles dimension. I used a chunk of amethyst I had lying around to apply some more texture onto the tiles. I then slathered on a coat of Mod Podge to seal up the foam and get it ready to prime. I also added a second coat, just for good measure. I attached the foam onto the base using some wood glue and let everything dry. Once dry, I began a long process of layering various stone shades until I had a look I was happy with. I balanced warm and cool tones and settled on a color scheme of blues, purples, and grays. I wasn't sure how I was going to portray the corrupted ooze that Artorius sheds while he's sculpting around. 
but I settled on using some color shift paints that I would embed in the cracks. I actually ended up liking the way it looked, and I moved on to the foliage from here. I had some grass tufts that I found a while back which happened to fit perfectly with this project. The final addition to the base would be some moss, which was done by applying fine turf flocking from Woodland Scenics. I put some Mod Podge in places where I wanted the moss to be and then dusted the flocking on with my fingers. The moss helps to unify the foliage on the base and is really satisfying to work with. I messed around with various size and colors of flocking and really just played around until I got the look I was going for. I put all the elements together for a test fit and got to see how everything would look once it all got glued into place. All that's left now is to glue up all the parts and he's pretty much done. Whatever thou art, stay away. Soon. I will be consumed by them, by the dark. The spread of the abyss must be stopped. Oh, I'm strong, human. Surely, mankind are more than pure dark. 